It's certainly been a little while. First, before we get started, we want to express solidarity with all who are affected in this difficult time. It's been an interesting few months, lots of emotions from fear, boredom, and creativity to self-reflection. We've really got to learn a lot about ourselves and how we respond to a really, really bad situation. Here's what we've been up to. So first of all, before we get started, I just want to thank everyone who has subscribed to this channel. We recently got to 10,000 subscribers, which is amazing. So whether you came early on or came lately, thanks for coming aboard and we're going to have a lot of great content coming soon. And with that, today we do have a sponsor for this video. This video is sponsored by Artlist and Artgrid. Artlist is a music licensing service and they are the first ones that introduced the subscription model. So back when I first started back in 2016, 2017, they were the ones I went with and they are a great company. They make it very simple to get one royalty-free license that could be good for personal projects up to something that actually airs on television. So Artlist is really one of the most simple options for you to get unlimited downloads of royalty-free music and those licenses stay with you forever even if you decide to cancel your Artlist membership. So you can check out Artlist or Artgrid, their stock footage service with my link in the description and I'll put it up right here and support the channel. So how are our video projects doing? How's our business doing during all of this pandemic, quarantine? Well, we've always been a jack of all trades type, so we've never really been put into a specific niche, although there have been times where we've specialized in wedding filmmaking or specialized in real estate. We just kind of do a little bit of it all, which is something I'm really thankful for now because weddings are postponed for the foreseeable future and we still have a lot of projects coming in, whether it be real estate or web series type things or even some broadcast television work. So we've actually been able to stay busier than you might think. Something I've really enjoyed doing is a neighborhood project we've been working on with League Real Estate, uh, kind of highlighting all the different neighborhoods in our hometown, Fort Worth, Texas. So check out the intro for one of those. It was really a fun project to do, but it was also a little bizarre filming some of this footage during the quarantine, during a time when people are staying home. There were a lot of times that we flew the drone up and we just saw no cars and no traffic. So it was definitely a little bit of a surreal project to work on, but it was something good that we could do while maintaining social distancing and staying safe. So I'm really thankful that we had that project to work on during all of this. The other thing that has been really good is that we're all caught up on things like weddings and we're very much just churning along at Project Zero and not holding on to projects for very long. So that's another thing that's kind of worked out for us. I think overall, it's an interesting time to be in the content creating world because while a lot of industries have completely halted, there's still a significant need for content to be made, whether that's commercial work, whether that's social media stuff. So if you're doing any kind of production, there still should be several opportunities to create content for people. So you know I've got to talk also about the latest that we've been doing with film. It's been a new medium that has really inspired us a lot. We haven't shot as much as we'd like during the quarantine, but we did get uh, a little point and shoot. We each got point and shoots. Here's one of them. This is the Olympus Mu One, the original. So this camera was about a hundred dollars. So a little bit pricey, but honestly, the price of point and shoot cameras has gotten completely out of control. But anyways, we put a couple rolls of Kodak Gold through it and I really thought it was a super fun and nostalgic camera. It makes it look like my childhood, all these photos, because 
A lot of the photos taken from my childhood were taken on Kodak Gold. We also shot a roll of Fuji, just going on a little photo walk with our buddy Tyler Germain. It was good just to practice a little bit, but really I needed to burn through that roll in order to shoot uh, Ektachrome 120. So as you guys probably know, our first roll of Ektachrome didn't quite work out. We were having issues with our first Mamiya, and I was really disappointed to pay so much for the film and so much for the E6 processing, only to end up with nothing. So I was on a mission to get a roll of 120 Ektachrome developed, and I am really happy with how these came out. The overall vision for these photos was to have about half of them during the day and half of them at night. And the main set piece during the day was an abandoned baseball field in Fort Worth called the Grave Field. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get inside to get any photos, but we got some really good ones from outside of the park. Then we just drove around trying to find some interesting night scenes. My favorite one was this abandoned Walgreens that still had all the lights on even though it was completely empty. And I was just so happy with how these turned out. I was worried that I was gonna have some kind of overexposure or the images just wouldn't end up dynamic enough, but these turned out great. So I have a few quick hits on the FX9 since my last video. We got exciting news, us FX9 owners, that they announced the next firmware update that's gonna have full frame 60p in 4K, custom LUTs, a touchscreen, and a lot of additional features. So I was actually impressed by the firmware update, but disappointed by the release date. We have to wait till October when they initially told us it would be ready in the summer. So I will say I disagree with people who say this camera is crippled, but at the same time, I do believe that the camera wasn't really ready to be launched when it was. Sony wanted to launch it to compete with the C500 Mark II, and that's obvious. They wanted to undercut it in price and get it out to market, and I think when they this firmware update comes out, it'll be more of a finished product of a camera. But I also wanted to show you guys about how I balance this camera on the gimbal. Okay, so this isn't quite toolless, but it is very simple. So first things first, we put on the Ronin base plate and we are going to take off this cheese plate. We're gonna take off the top handle and we're gonna take off the monitor because that stuff is going to throw off our balance too much. Okay, so here is the FX9 down to the nuts and bolts, the very basics of what the camera can be. And you'll notice a couple things here. We have the 17 to 28 lens that is, to my estimation, the best gimbal lens. It's very lightweight, f2.8. This thing can pretty much do it all. And then you'll also notice we have the small BPU-30 battery loaded in there just to cut down on that weight as well. So let's get to balancing it on the gimbal. And as you saw in the video, we're gonna load it in backwards. So it definitely is a little bit more difficult to balance because you don't have the full range of motion of all of the motors. The camera body does not clear everything, but you'll notice that it will power on just fine. So here are a couple more samples of the footage from the FX9 on the gimbal. I really wouldn't recommend this setup. Firstly, it's very heavy, and secondly, I'm just not all that pleased with the results. I think I'm going to try the Crane 3S next and see if that's a viable option. So that's kind of what we've been up to during this whole quarantine. The whole thing has made me really thankful that we're in the situation that we are in and we can continue to work in some capacity and we haven't been hit as hard as a lot of other people. So solidarity for anyone who's being affected or working on the front lines. Let me know how you guys are faring during this time, any creative ideas for your businesses that you might be implementing, any interesting video jobs that you might have taken related to the quarantine. I'd love to hear and chat about it, and I will see you in the next video.